Test. Two. Three. Test. Two.
which as I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only first in my heart. My King of heaven, my treasure, thou art. Joys, oh heaven, sad. Heart of my own heart, whatever before, still be my vision. Thy faithfulness.
Oh 
Let me tell you what I what I want to do sometime in the future. Just uh, just to mix it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so well. Good morning. 
Good morning. Oh, I like this. This is so nice. It's good to see all of you here. Would you please stand? I would like for you to repeat these words after me. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I, I didn't hear somebody over here, so can we start all over? <laughs> Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. For it is good, it is good to, sing to sing praises unto our God. For it, is pleasant, For it is pleasant, and praise, and praise is, comely. is comely. Thank you. Please be seated. Let us pray. Most holy and righteous God of heaven, how glorious and beautiful and wonderful is your name. We lift you up this morning in song and in praise. We thank you for the privilege. You woke us up and you helped us to get ourselves together to come to this place to sing praises to your name. We ask that you forgive us of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Beautiful smiles. Oh, somebody trying to outsmile you over here, Sister Glaze. You're going to have to. Oh, no, you got her. You got her. We're going to have some beautiful smile. Oh, there we go. Amen. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together loving, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. We'll do it again. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together loving, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I give myself away, I give myself away, so you can use me. I give myself away, hey. I give myself away, amen, so you can use me. Here I am to worship, amen. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together loving, amen. All together worthy. All together wonderful to me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Amen. 190, leaning on the everlasting arms. We're going to go to the book on that one. Amen. <laughs> 190. <laughs> Wasn't too bad. Amen. 190. Here we go. What a... Fellowship, what a joy divine. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. And what a blessedness, what a peace of mind. I'm leaning 
on the everlasting arms I am leaning on Jesus I'm leaning on my Savior and I'm safe and secure from all alarms I am leaning on leaning on yes I'm leaning on my Savior and I'm leaning on the everlasting arms and oh how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way I'm leaning on the everlasting arms and oh how bright the path grows from day to day i'm leaning on the everlasting arms and i am leaning on leaning on yes i'm leaning on my savior and i'm safe and secure from all along I am leaning on leaning on yes I'm leaning on my Savior and I'm leaning on the everlasting on and oh, what have I to dread what have I to fear? I'm leaning on the everlasting arms, and I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. I'm leaning on the on the everlasting arms i am leaning on leaning on yes i'm leaning on my savior and i'm safe and secure from all along i am leaning on leaning on yes i'm leaning on my savior and i'm leaning on the everlasting arm i am leaning on leaning on yes i'm leaning on my savior and i'm safe and secure from all all along I am leaning on leaning on yes I'm leaning on my Savior yes I'm leaning on the everlasting arms amen I surrender all I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, and oh, I surrender all. I surrender all, all to G my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.
It's good to see you all and be in the presence with you this morning. Uh, today's scripture that we will be having our dissertation from is uh, Luke 15. Luke 15, I will be reading verses 11 through 17 in your hearing. Then he said, verse 11, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the goods that fall to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all, journeyed to a far country, and there he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. 14, but when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Verse 17, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. May we pray on the scripture. Heavenly Father, our most gracious Father, we thank you first and foremost for finding us when we were lost. As this scripture that will be uh, presented to us today will show us many things of how and such were some of us. We were once lost and Father God, you found us. So we just want to thank you, Father, and give you all the adoration and acknowledgement you deserve. We thank you for your due diligence. We thank you for a divine line of prayer to you and only you, Father. We thank you for all the things that you have continued to do for us in the past, in the present, and in the future. Father God, we thank you for this first day of this new week that we're able to break off your bread of life and hunger no more. We pray, Father, that you continue to lift up your manservant. He's dealing with a particular illness right now, a cold, and we just ask that you cover him right now, Father God, that you give him the power and biblical authority to demonstrate your word. We ask, Father, that you touch his voice, that you continue, Father, to allow him to recognize and recall the things in which we would need to hear on this day. Father God, we thank you for our leadership, and we thank you for the wives of these particular men, Sister Curl, Sister Jenny Moore, uh, Sister Davis, Sister L. Page, who continue to help the men uh, of this congregation to help lead us and equip us. We thank you for these women. Father God, we thank you for all the women and men and children in the congregation. It is a pleasure to be in the presence of such wonderful people, people who we relate to, people that we've gone through things with. Father God, we just ask you to just clear our minds right now, clear our hearts, allow us to just give it all to you at this moment, Father God. We thank you. We have so much gratitude and appreciation for your power. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Veins, oh Lord, it's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. And while the blood is running war, it's in my veins, oh, it's in my veins. It's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins, oh Lord, it's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. And while the blood is running, whoa, it's in my veins, whoa, it's in my veins. And I'm going to pray just a little over here, and I'm going to pray just a little over there. And while the blood is running, whoa, it's in my veins, whoa, it's in my veins. And I'm going to praise him just a little over here. And I'm going to praise him just a little over there. And while the blood is running, whoa, it's in my veins. Whoa, it's in my veins. It's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. Oh, Lord, it's in my veins. Lord, it's in my veins. And while the while I got time on this side, I'm gonna praise his name. And I'm my name. Whoa, it's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins, oh Lord, it's in my veins, Lord, it's in Amen. And while the blood is running warm, it's in my veins, whoa, it's in my veins. 
and I'm gonna sing just a little over here and I'm gonna sing just a little over there and while the blood is running whoa, in my veins whoa, it's in my veins and I'm gonna shout just a little over here and I'm gonna shout just a little over there and while the blood is running warm, it's in my veins. Whoa, it's in my veins. Oh, it's in my veins. Oh, Lord, it's in my veins. Oh, Lord. And while the blood is running warm, it's in my veins. Whoa, it's in my veins. Oh, Lord, it's in my veins. Oh, Lord, it's in my veins. Lord, it's in my veins. While the blood is running warm in my veins, in my veins. Amen. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord, leads me on and through him i must win and i'm singing oh i want to see him look upon his face and up there sing forever of his of his saving grace on the street of glory let me lift my voice and you know that i'll be home oh and ever to rejoice and i'm singing oh want to see him look upon his face and up there to sing forever of his saving of his saving grace on streets of the law re let me lift my voice and you know that i'll be home lord and ever to rejoice and win in service in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to him. He will, he will give me life. Now Satan snares, they may vex my soul and turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord, goes ahead and he leaves be and I'm singing oh I want to see him and look upon his face and up there to sing for Lord of his of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift up my voice and you know that cares i'll be home yeah oh and ever to rejoice and i'm singing oh i want to i want to see him upon his face and up there to sing for amen of his of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift up my voice i know that care i'll be home yeah 
Or than ever to rejoice. And I'm singing, oh, I want to see, oh Lord, and look upon his face and up there to sing forever of his, of his, of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift up my voice and you know that cares. I'll be home, yeah. Lord, and ever to rejoice. Amen. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Amen. Amen. Let the Spirit of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord, we're going to let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Whoa, and a whoa, whoa, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of, come on and let it rise. Come on and let it rise. Glory of the Lord, Lord, and let the praises of our King, come on and let it rise. Whoa, and a whoa, whoa, we're going to let it rise. Let the Spirit of the Lord, let the Spirit, of, come on and let it rise. Come on and let it rise. Let that Spirit rise. And let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Say, oh, 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 let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord, let the songs of the, come on and let it rise. You better let it rise. Rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let it rise. Say the whoa, whoa. Let it rise. Let the joy, joy, joy. Let the joy deep down in your heart. You ought to let it rise. Deep down in your soul. You ought to let it rise. Praises of our King. Rise on, let it rise. Shout it, shout it, shout it, whoa, whoa, and let it rise. Let the Spirit of the Lord, come on and let it rise. All the praise to you, all the praise to you, all the praise to you. Praises of our King, come on and let it rise. Somebody shout, oh, 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 somebody shout, oh, 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 sing it again, say, oh, 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 sing it again, say, oh, 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 we're going to let it ride. Amen. Amen. The song after the message is, God has smiled on me. Amen? Amen. All the children say, amen. All the children say, hey. All the children say, hey. Amen. Hey. All the babies say, hey. The grown babies say, hey. Everybody say amen, amen, amen. amen. See him in the manger, lying in the manger. Early one morning say amen, amen. Now see him in the temple. 
Talking to the elders. See how they marveled. Hey. Hey, Amen. Amen. Now see him on the seashore. Preaching to the people. Healing all the sick ones. Say, hey. Hey, Amen. 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 And if you believe it, say, Amen. If you believe it, say, Amen. If you believe it, say, Amen. 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 See him in the garden. Praying to the Father. And so much sorrow, say, hey, amen, amen, hey. Now see him in the judgment hall. Somebody lied on him. Some cried, crucify him, say, hey, hey. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, hey. Now see him on the cross now, hey. Bearing all our sins away And so much pain Say, hey, amen, amen, hey I didn't deserve it Say, hey, I didn't deserve it Say, hey, but oh how I needed it Hey, amen, amen See him in the tomb now, hey. There three days, say, hey. Some rich man's grave, say, hey, hey. Amen, amen. Now look at the angels, hey. Rolling that stone away. An empty grave, say, hey. Amen. Amen, amen, eh. Yes, he died for me, say, eh. Take all my sins away. But he lives today, say, eh. Amen, amen, eh. I didn't deserve it, say, eh. I didn't deserve it, say, eh. I didn't deserve it, say, hey, amen, 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 hey. Buried one morning, hey. but I rose again, say, hey. and he, he forgave my sins. Somebody say, hey, amen, 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 hey. Deserve it, say, amen. I didn't deserve it, say, amen. Amen. The church say, amen. Thank God for Jesus Christ. The Hebrew writer calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank God for Jesus Christ. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. He has allowed us to uh, live on and be in our right minds and to be able to know who we are and uh, live, move, and have our very being. We ought to be grateful and thankful for all that God has done. Uh, I know you all can hear that my voice is acting ugly on me. Uh, so I'm going to preach as long as I have a voice. Uh, and when I run out of voice, I'll just be done. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Um, well, celebration's over. Everybody's gone home. What we going to do now? I want to
want to thank uh, each and every one of you uh, for uh, all that you did to make last weekend uh, such a huge success. Uh, we, uh, I believe we did right uh, by throwing just a wonderful celebration on last week. And I applaud all of you for your help. I believe Brother and Sister Curl would uh, be proud of what uh, we were able to accomplish, and we certainly wanted to uh, shower them which is, with as much love uh, as we possibly could muster. Uh, and uh, the people who came from out of state are still talking about uh, how we celebrated them. And I want to thank you because uh, our congregation has set a precedent now uh, for other congregations uh, throughout the brotherhood uh, as there is a generation of preachers who uh, are going to, in the next few years, uh, be passing the torch to someone else. Uh, and I just want to thank you uh, for that. We, we uh, have hit the ground running. Uh, in the last week, um, our congregation has suffered two losses uh, in this last week alone. Uh, many of you know uh, Sean Dominguez. This is Sharon McDonald's sister. Her husband, Brian, passed away. Uh, and his services uh, have already taken place in Belize. But on this Friday, uh, we're going to have a memorial service uh, in his honor uh, I believe it's at 10 a.m. on Friday. Uh, we want to invite all of you out to help support uh, Sean and their two girls uh, as they will have to uh, continue on uh, without him. And I want you all to pray for them because that's a young family. He was a young man, not even 40 years old, uh, and left a wife and two small girls. So we want to pray for them. And then also, uh, we found out uh, that we lost um, Patricia Joseph. Uh, many of you, she uh, would come to our 11 a.m. service. Uh, that's uh, Charles Wyndon's sister. Uh, Brother Wyndon attends here at 8 o'clock. His sister passed away, and her service is going to be on Wednesday here at the building at 10 a.m., uh, and we want to pray for Brother Wyndon and his family uh, as they, too, have been hit uh, with death. Uh, so we want to uh, be in prayer for all those that are mourning and grieving uh, at this time. I'm going to ask if you would, if you please don't go too far now, don't go too far. Uh, but I, I do want I do want to welcome our visitors. If you are here this morning and you are not a member at Crenshaw here, will you stand where you are? We would like to recognize you. We want to love you up. If you are here and you are not a member of Crenshaw, we have one, two. I know we have more than that. Three in the back. Four. All right. We have four. Now, y'all remain standing. Now, listen, uh, the people. Uh, Two or three rows behind you and two and three rows in front of you are all going to come and introduce themselves. Everybody in the back is going to introduce themselves to you. And, and, and ma'am, everybody behind that overhang is going to, going to introduce themselves to you. And sir, right here in the front, those people standing right next to you, they're going to go out of their way to make you feel at home. Can we do that for two minutes? Can we show our visitors some love and welcome them this morning? May God bless you.
Lord, the people praise you. We lift you up and raise you. And Lord, you are the Holy One. Lord, you're the one, you're the only one. And Lord, the people love you. We place no one above you. Lord, cause you are the Holy One. Lord, you're the one, you're the only one. And we're singing, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. How you doing, brother? All the glory is due you. Cause Lord, you are the Holy One. Lord, you're the one, you're the only one. And if we had 10,000 hands, we would praise you as you command. Cause Lord, you are the Holy One. Lord, you're the one, you're the only one. And if we had 10,000 tongues, come on y'all, amen. We would praise you with everyone. Cause Lord, you are the only one. Amen, brother. Oh, you're the one, you're the only one. And we're singing, Halle, Halle, ha. Amen, y'all. Halle, Halle, Halle. All the praise is due you. Lord, cause you are the Holy One. Lord, you're the one, you're the only one. And we're singing, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. All the glory is due you. Lord, cause you are the Holy One. Lord, you're the one, you're the only one. Cause you're the one, you're the only one. Cause you're the one, you're the only one. Lord, cause you are the Holy One. Lord, you're the one, you're the only one. I'd like for us this morning um, to take a very familiar passage of scripture and my plan is not to uh, dissect it with um, a scalpel or anything this morning. I just want to lay out a fourfold message uh, that is going to outline what it is uh, we as a congregation uh, is going to study uh, in 2014. I would like to show you four things uh, out of the prodigal son that uh, will season what we talk about in 2014. Uh, uh, I, I'll be honest, I recognize I talked a whole lot of smack a couple weeks ago about coming to the table. Uh, well, people who come to the table are going to have some needs that we're going to have to deal with. As a matter of fact, uh, there are some things you, you struggle with, you have some needs, and, and those things we're going to have to meet head on. We're going to have to deal with those. And so I just want to show you about four things. I may only talk about the first one, but our four quarters of 2014 are going to be centered on these four themes that we find in 2014. And, and I want you to understand um, our Bible classes are going to talk about them. Uh, on Sunday, it's my job to stand up and proclaim the word of God. Uh, and it's a monologue. Uh, I do all the talking, you do all the listening. Okay, that, 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 that's what we do on Sunday. I, I, I'm going to do all the yelling and the walking the flow and all of that. And that's my job. Uh, and, and your job is to be engaged and to listen. Uh, but the problem is there are some things that I can say uh, that you might have a question for. And we're not going to be able to stop in the middle of the proclamation to deal with it. So what we have done is we have equipped our teachers now to deal with the same subject matter that you hear from the pulpit uh, also in the classroom. 
Uh, so I want you to understand, uh, it, it does you no good if you come and listen to me proclaim, but not engage in the material, not engage in the word. Uh, so it's imperative for you to come to Bible study so that you can, you can have conversation. Amen. Ab about what we're preaching through and about what's being taught. We want to engage you because it does you no good to come and listen uh, to Brother Tyson for 40 minutes on Sunday morning. As soon as you get home, you can't remember near thing that I just said. Does you no good. It don't help you at all. It don't help you. So I, I want to help you. So we, we, I want you to know that what you hear uh, from the pulpit is going to be explained in the classroom. And so we want, we want, we want to encourage you uh, as you are still trying to hold fast to your New Year's resolution. Hold fast to the one that says you're coming back to Bible study. Amen. Uh, so this morning I want to read the text and then I want to offer uh, uh, four things to you. And again, as long as my voice holds up, we'll keep going. Uh, the Bible says in Luke 15, beginning at verse number 11. Now this is the third part of one story. Jesus has already given us a story of a shepherd that loses his sheep. He gives us a story of a woman who loses her coin. And then in verse number 11, the Bible says, Then Jesus said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them, that's the older and the younger brother, his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a faraway country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Now, before, before I go any further, I just want y'all to notice something. If it was you, and just think about it, if this is you, I don't know about you, but if it was me, the moment I ran out of money, I'm going back home. I ain't gonna even lie. I mean, the, the moment my money run dry, I, I'm not looking for no job. I'm too far away from home for all that. I, I'm headed back to the house on bended knee. Cause, cause, Cause I want my daddy to know, man, I messed up. I messed up. I'm sorry. And, and I'm going back home. And, 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 but he don't do that. He, he, he decides he's gonna get a job. Cause see, his pride won't let him go home and ask for help. So he's still gonna prove to his father that he can make it, so, so he's not gonna go home begging because he don't want his daddy to have to, to, have to uh, look down his nose at him and he don't want to face the ridicule, so he decides he's gonna get a job. And, 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 and so he joined himself to a citizen of that country and the citizen sent him into the fields to feed swine. Now you would think the moment this good upstanding Jewish boy is told that he got to work this kind of job, that that would have made him say, you know what, I need to set my pride down and go on, go back home. Uh, but, but he ain't hit his low yet. Y'all ever known a person that get in trouble and you think, well, you know, this right here is a low, they're they going to bounce back from this and then they hit a new low. Oh, y'all don't know nothing about hitting a new low. Uh, uh, and, 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 and then you think, well, I know they learned a lesson from this. They got to bounce back off the, the bottom of the pool on this. And then they hit another new low. And then before you know it, they didn't, they didn't sunk deeper. Okay, y'all don't have time for that. That's all right. Y'all, that'll make sense to you in a moment. Uh, so now, now he got this job, and his job is feeding the pigs. And the Bible says, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. Now I want you to watch this. He got a job feeding swine, but his job don't pay enough to adequately feed them. Tyson, how can you say that? Because he's jealous of what the pigs are eating. And if his job paid him, all he got to do is wait till he get off work, cash his check, and go get some real food. But this man then worked himself into a job that don't pay enough. Oh, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Uh, you can get a job at the mall if you want to. Uh, amen. That, that's cute when you're in college and, and, and you and you trying to get some pocket money. But, but, but working at the mall is not going to afford you the opportunity to move out your mama's house. 
another sermon for another time. All right. But here's, here's the verse I want to focus on, at least for the bulk of this message. The Bible says, but when he came to himself. So I want you to watch this. While he was buying up the bar, he wasn't himself. When he was treating everybody and wasting his money, he wasn't himself. When he decided, I still ain't going home, I'm going to get a job. Guess what? He wasn't himself. When he decided he going to work in the fields with the swine, he was not himself. When he looked at the food that the swine was eating and realized that they were eating better than him, he was not himself. But verse 17 says, then all of a sudden, he came to himself. And I, and I, and I want to show you people who come to the table in God's banquet, uh, uh, they go through what we're going to call uh, and we understand to know as repentance. Yeah. And when a person comes to the Lord, they are in the process of repentance. And I want you to understand, repentance is not a one-time event. Are y'all missing this? Uh, how, preacher, how can you say it's not a one-time uh, event? Don't we, don't we say in the five-step plan of salvation that a man must repent, and then once he repents, he must confess? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. It means changing your mind, but changing your mind is a process that don't happen overnight. It don't happen in the middle of the sermon. It don't happen when we say, Jesus, just as I am. It does not happen the moment the light bulb comes up. Some of us are in the middle of changing in the middle of changing our mind. We are in the middle of, of getting better and getting right with God and it is a process. And that's the reason why people come to the Lord. Uh, don't expect them to change and have it all together uh, overnight. Come on now Keith I know you ain't going to sit up back behind there. Anybody else sitting up here? Now, now, now y'all can't see. Now we got to get some more chairs. We got plenty of room at the table. Now come on. Uh, y'all just squeeze it in. Uh, if, if we got to get the brothers to stand on the wall, we'll be all right. Uh, but, but don't make the ladies sit down front though, okay? Can we try not to do that in the future? I appreciate that. Uh, but, but I want you to understand, repentance, repentance is an ongoing process. See, many of us think we repented long time ago uh, of our lifestyle and, and, and we don't need any more repentance. But I stopped by to let you know that the moment uh, you engage God's word and study, the moment you seek God, you realize there are still changes that need to be made in your life. Uh, and that happens after the cross. That happens uh, when you come to worship, when you open up your Bible, when you study your Bible, you realize you still have some changing to do. So he came to himself, and I want to look at that just for a few minutes. And, and, and this is what he said when he came to himself. He said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough? Watch this, and to spare. Not only do they have enough bread, but they can throw it away. They have enough rule of food to give it away. And he says, but I perish with hunger. So he says, I will arise. Now I want you to watch this. He's, in, he's just in the middle of repentance. Preacher, how do we know? Well, why is he going home? Why is he going home? Because he hungry. That's why. He just said, my father got folks working with him that eating better than me. And, and, and I know if I come back and ask for a job, at least, at the very least, I can feed myself. So you know what drives him to go back to his father? His belly. Are y'all missing this? There are some people who come back to church. They, they are looking for God to save them from this situation. Are y'all missing this? I preacher, what you trying to say? Well, they have gone out in the world distant from God and have gotten in trouble. They have nothing left and all they know is how they was raised and big mama told them, never forsake God, go to church, get right with God, get back in the church and they out there hungry and starving and in need of some help and they decide, I remember my big mama told me, never leave God, get back to the church, get back 
to the Lord and I decided I've been out here in the street long enough eating what I wanted to eat, drinking what I wanted to drink, doing what I wanted to do with Lord knows who and I have come to myself and I realize that the situation I'm in is not as good as I could have it if I go back to God and I don't know how they're going to accept me. I don't know what I'm going to do. All I know is I need to go back to my father. So when they come in, it ain't necessarily coming back and trying to get on the table. They're not coming back trying to teach a class. They're not coming back. To, folk, folk coming to the Lord because they hungry. All right, all right. So he gets his apology together. And he says, I'm going to say to my daddy when I get there, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your higher servants. And he arose and came to his father, but he was still a great far way off. His father saw him and had compassion. Ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Uh, just in case we don't get through it, when people come to the table, they're going to be in need of reconciliation. Whatever has gone awry, they're trying to fix it. And God is trying to recapture the relationship that he had with you before you left him. And, and the process of reconciliation is allowing the blood of Christ to wash you and be your atonement so that you can get back in good with God. So we're going we're gonna to look for a whole quarter. We're going to look at reconciliation. And then, and then what's interesting is his father runs to him, kisses him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But I want you to watch this. The daddy doesn't say anything to the boy. He says, but the father said to his servant, bring out the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And, 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 I, and I want you to watch this. What he does is restore him. Repentance, reconciliation, and restoration. So I want you to watch this. The father pays the price to put the pieces back together again. That's, that, that's going to give you something to shout about in a minute, I promise, all right? So he restores him. But then uh, after, after this restoration, the story don't stop there. Well, preacher, I see the boy repenting. I see God uh, trying to mend it and, and the father reconciling the relationship. And I see that the son has been restored uh, his rights as a son. But the story don't stop there. The Bible says in verse number 23, the father says to his servants, bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead. And is, look at that, he was dead and he is alive again. He was lost and he is found. And they began to make merry. Now, I want you to watch this. I want you to watch this. The last thing, uh, if the Lord says the same in the last quarter of 2014, uh, we got to deal with redemption. Um, because when people come to the table, you got to know that, that you can't look for the other guests at the table to give you your value. See, because if I'm sitting next to you at the table and I'm looking at your sin and your background, and if mine ain't as bad as yours, the first thing I'm thinking is I'm so glad I'm not as bad as you. And that's how most people, that's how we judge one another. We say, whoa, I ain't that bad, amen. <laughs> whoa, she sure do got some holes in her past. I don't, I don't want to be him. I sure am glad I'm not that. I mean, isn't it, that it, what the Pharisee did in the temple when he was praying? I ain't like that tax collector. Lord have mercy. I ain't, whoa, I've been better than him. We compare ourselves. So, so what happened is we don't feel redeemed because people look down their nose at us. But you are at the table not because of the other people at the table. You are at the table because God has you at the table. And he deemed you worthy enough to be at his table. 
So, so, so people when they come are going to be in need of redemption. That, that means you might be trash to somebody else, but you are valuable to God. And I want you to watch this. The, 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 the common denominator in the three stories in Luke 15, when the shepherd gets home with the sheep, he invites his friends over and they throw a party. When the woman finally finds her coin, she, she invites her friends over and they throw a party. When the son returns home, guess what the father does? Kills a fatted calf and they throw a party. Uh, we we, we got to celebrate the fact that God is still in the saving business. Amen. Amen. And, and so those are the four things uh, we're going to try to get to. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of the story. I want to go ahead and jump ahead. Uh, I want to speak from the subject this morning, from the outs to the shouts. From the outs to the shouts. Time is moving. People are falling. This world is fast paced with no time for stalling. Instant gratification. I have to please me. Self-interest only. Who cares what you need? Don't try to stop me. For this I have no time. You get yours because I'm going to get mine. People in the world are so busy being concerned with self that they have no time for others, let alone God. We wrap ourselves in success, placate ourselves with accomplishments, and satisfy our urges with play toys. We want what we want without concern for its ramifications. We seek our desires without thinking of its effects. We believe the grass is greener on the other side without stopping to look down at where we are standing. We are selfish sinners. Amen, Walls. We chase after the things of this world for so long that we forget who made the world. We play, with the, we play the world's games for so long that we forget who died for the world. We forget that this world is not our home. Time is moving. People are falling. This world is fast paced. Can I rhyme this morning? Fast paced with no time for stalling. Instant gratification. I have to please me. Self interest only. Who cares what you need? Don't try to stop me. For this I have no time. You get yours. Cause I'm gonna get mine. Amen. Walls. The world as a whole does worship. The world devotes its time, attention, energy, and lays its sacrifice at the altar dedicated to I, me, mine, and myself. What I want, what's going on with me, these things are mine, and I only have time for myself. Self- Preservation calls for me to run over you to get ahead. It calls for me to lock my doors when you knock and shut up my heart when I should help and plug my ears so that I will not hear you cry. This is how many people in the world operate and live their lives. However, as children of God, we have been called out of this darkness and the gospel of Jesus Christ has shined its light on us in such a way that brings about a change. We now invite people to the table of God who for all intents and purposes have only learned how to live for themselves. Time is moving. People are falling. The world is fast paced with no, can I rhyme? I, I, I thought y'all was going to get with my rhyme here. The world is fast paced with no time for stalling. Instant gratification. I have to please me. Self interest only. Who cares what you need? Don't try to stop me. For this I have no time. You get yours because I'm going to get mine. Mahatma Gandhi would 
say that the seven deadly sins are wealth without work, pleasure without conscience, knowledge without character, commerce without morality, science without humanity, worship without sacrifice, and politics without principle. Amen, Walls. King Solomon would say that there are six things that the Lord hates and seven things that are an abomination to him. A proud look, amen, Walls. A lion tongue, amen, Walls. Hands that shed innocent blood, amen. A heart that devises wicked plan, amen. Feet that are always swift run into evil. You know, people who like mess, like to keep up mess, be in on everybody else mess, love for mess to happen so they can have something to talk about. Amen, Walls. A false witness who speak lies and one who sows discord among the brethren. Amen. The apostle Paul would say that the works of the flesh are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissension, heresy, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. These are the kind of people God is calling to repentance and calling to his table. Time is moving. People are falling. The world is fast paid with no time for stalling. Instant gratification. I have to please me. Self-interest only. Who cares what you need? Don't try to stop me. For this, I have no time. You get yours because I'm going to get mine. These are the people Jesus calls unto him. They are in desperate need of the host and what he is serving at his table it is no secret that Jesus upsets the apple cart of the religious establishment by making friends and keeping company with the people we just talked about the pharisaical powers that be are hell bent on undermining Jesus' authority because of their disdain for his radical politics, his suspect stance on scripture, his tendency to break the law, and his undesirable acquaintances. The opponents of Christ don't care for the type of people who are invited to sit at the table. Subsequently, they see no need for what God offers to all who come to him. Here's your point. The sin-weary soul that seeks eternal salvation must travel over the hills and through the valleys of repentance, restoration, reconciliation, and redemption. So we'll be going to study this year. Repentance, restoration, reconciliation, and redemption. Like the prodigal son, there are people who stand a guilty distance from God. Sin has separated us from fellowship and communion with God. We have fallen into the deep depths of uncertainty and despair. Some of us have left God in rebellion and embarrassment. We have wasted our goods on fleeting and trivial things. We have gone from having friends to being lonely. Amen, Tyson. We have soiled ourselves with the dirt of the world, knowing full well that we were raised better than this. Amen, Tyson. What goes through the mind of a person who has come to the end of their proverbial rope? The prodigal found himself with no money, no friends, and ultimately no self-respect. 
he had stooped to a new low. Verse 17 says that he came to himself. A light bulb went off. Something inside him said, this isn't right. Something inside him says, I know that there is something better than this. I'm out of time already. Let me give you the three, three examples of repentance in the story. First of all, brothers and sisters, repentance simply means when you are convicted and you know you're wrong. It's the realization that says, oops, I messed up. I have done something wrong. It is an understanding that makes you feel sorry for what you have done. For, for many of us, we go about our daily lives not knowing that we have offended someone. We do the same actions over and over again, not knowing that it hurts a person's feelings. And then the moment they bring it to your attention, a light bulb should go off. The moment you know you've done them wrong, something inside you should say, oops, I messed up. I need to try to make this thing right. I want you to watch something. The boy realized his situation was not good. Now, we all know it's his fault that he's there, right? I mean, do we really need to tell the prodigal son, well, you know, you was the one who left home that way. Y'all think he know that? When he's sitting there looking at the food that the swine is eating, do you think he realized that it's his fault? He knows that, right? Does he need anybody to explain to him why it's his fault that he's stuck in that situation? He realized he's wrong, right? And he know everything he did in his wrongness. He don't need no help explaining to him that he's wrong. You know why? Because he came to himself. When folk come back to church, I want you to watch this. They know they ain't been here in months of Sundays. And they don't need you asking them, where you been? Now, if she leave, if she leave with one kid, she gone for 10, 12 months and come back with a second kid, you know where she been. You don't need to ask no question. It, it, if you don't see him for two to five, And he come back with a tattoo tear. You don't need to ask him where you been. Can we just be honest? Can we be honest? It, it, if, if they leave together but one comes back by themselves, you don't need to ask where they been. Why? Because they have come to themselves. And, and, and they are back. Look, watch this. It might not even be for the right reason. They might be coming back just to save face. Not because they love the Lord, but thank God that they came back. You know everybody, everybody don't go to the gym for the same reason. Look, 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 look. If when you getting dressed for the gym, you got to look in the mirror, yeah. you ain't going for the same reason I'm going. Don't y'all miss that. Don't y'all miss that. Tyson, what you trying to say? Everybody at the gym ain't trying to get healthy. 
Some folk go to the gym because they're trying to get hitched. Everybody don't come to church because they say, sanctified, love God. Amen, Walt. Second thing is, he realizes that it's some people out in the street that's living better than him. He realizes that there's something better for him at home. So look, when he comes to himself, what does he say? My daddy got folk working for him that's doing better than me. Now, when it comes to our understanding and theology, what messes us up is we believe that, that when we mess up, God don't like ugly, so he pulls his blessings from us. And when you run out of blessings, the first thing we think is, well, I need to go back and get right with God so I can give me some more of them blessings. It's quiet in here because I'm telling the truth. But I want you to watch this. You can come back to God. You can get rebaptized, saved, get a new birth certificate. You can do the whole nine. That don't equate to physical blessing. And a lot of people think, well, Everybody else in my family getting blessed but me, and I know I ain't living right, so let me go get right with God so I can get me some of those blessings. You, you might come back, get right with God, and get stuff taken from you. So don't think, don't think, but well, I'm going to go back and get right with God so I can get some of what she has. That's not necessarily the case. But he realized that there's some other people living better than him. So he decides, I'm going to go back because his situation is pitiful. But I want you to watch this. He got a job. When he go home, what is he going to ask his father for? A job. So I want you to watch this. He really just want to exchange his job of taking care of pigs for a job his daddy might have. So what he does is he's looking for another means of taking care of himself. There are people when they come back to the Lord some of us had a mentality we're going to do it for ourselves. But see, you can't restore yourself. And you can't reconcile yourself. And you for sure enough can't redeem yourself. So when you come back, sometimes we're back because we feel sorry for what we've done. You ever seen a person, especially now in the political climate, you know, different, uh, you know, movie stars or, or basketball sports stars or whatever, uh, they get caught doing something, and then they get, they have the press conference, they have the presser, and they sit in there crying and sobbing and 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 asking for forgiveness. Now, I don't know about you, but the first question I ask is, what are you sorry for? Because you was doing what you was doing fine when there was no light shed on it. But the moment you get busted, now, now I've sinned. Yeah, you have. But sometimes people are only sorry because they got caught. It, it ain't up to us to figure out the level of their sincerity. That's between them and God. And what keeps us from allowing folk to come to the table is we don't deem they're sorry enough. That's not our call. That's God's call. Remember now, you don't know why that person's at the gym. So you don't know. You don't know why your neighbor is here this morning. You don't know. All right. Uh, and then finally, finally, he simply comes to himself because he's hungry. And, 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 and there is an appetite that is not being filled with those pigs. It's not being filled. So what does he do? The second form of repentance means to change your mind. So he says, I'm stuck here in here in this, in this pig pen, but I'm going to get up. And I'm going to go home. 
Because at this moment, he knows that going home is better than staying with the pigs. So after he comes to himself, he got to change his mind. Well, at this point, he don't want to have to go home and face his daddy or his brother or everybody else in the community. But he didn't got so desperate enough. Guess what? He don't care. Have you ever got to a point where you say, I don't care what folks think about me? I don't care. When you came here, you were timid. You didn't want to come down front because, you know, we have our resident folk to come down front. You don't want to be numbered one of those people. And then finally, something goes awry in your life enough for you to say, you know what, forget what people are going to say about me. I'm going to come down front and ask for prayer. And I ain't going to be ashamed because I need a blessing. Care about what somebody say about me? When you get desperate enough for God, you do some crazy stuff. When you're desperate for God, you'll figure out a way. So I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home. I know when I get there, they're going to tease me. I don't have no shoes. I didn't, I didn't lost my robe. I smell like swine. I don't have no money. I didn't lost everything I had. And I know they're going to tease me. But at this point, I'd rather have a job and they tease me and be eaten than be out here by myself not eating. Help us, help us, uh, help us, help. So I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go home because I know to be with my father, even if I got to go through hell and hot water, is better than being out here with these pigs. And, and, and repentance is as you change your mind, you realize that God's way is better than your way. But changing your mind is a process. You learn. And it, 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 it don't happen overnight. Every time you say, okay, I'm not going to say that word anymore. And it still slips. You know, we make a big deal about the N-word. Black people shouldn't use the N-word. And I'm not a proponent that you use the N-word. And I try to take it out of my vocabulary. But every once in a while, one of you N-words come mess with me. And I just have the notion to call you by name. Hey, Amen. N-words. So the first thing you try to do is you try to take it out of your vocabulary, but it keeps slipping in there. And so then you decide, I got to replace it with another word. So you find another word to say instead of the N-word. Then you walk around and you say that word all day long as you are training yourself not to say it anymore. It's a process. And every once and again, you forget the process. But you're trying to take it out your vocabulary. Amen. I have sinned against heaven. I acknowledge my disobedience to God. Folk mess up. They know they messed up with God. Repentance is knowing that you did wrong in his sight. Even before you understanding what you did to me, just know what you did to God. Get that right. If you get you and God right, you can apologize to me later. Because I got some folk who still, still, I'm looking for them to forgive me, so I'm not going to hold it over your head. Just get right with God. So what did the boy do against God? Well, first of all, he disrespected his daddy. And that was wrong in the sight of God. He disrespected his daddy. And, 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 and he did not take care of his father. Y'all do know that in the Ten Commandments, the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother. Honor them, give them what's due them, the respect that's due them. If you fail to do that, you have broken one of the Ten Commandments. If you don't treat your mom and daddy like you should, you have, you have displeased God. Because one of his Ten Commandments is to make sure that you honor your father and your mother. So he recognized he sinned against heaven. But then he says to his father, his, his statement is, I've sinned against you. But at this point, we got to ask ourselves, well, does he fully understand what he did to his father? Because when he come back, he's looking for a job. Why is he looking for a job, Tyson? Well, he wants to work off his debt. And in his mind, if I can make enough money, I can pay my daddy back and then win his good graces. So in his mind, his mistake is I spent up all your money. When in reality, what he did was break his daddy's heart. 
So watch this. He's in the middle of repentance, but still don't even realize all that he's done. Because it's his mind, if I just get a job back, now I can pay daddy back his money and we square. See, some of us are trying to stop a bad habit. It's not so much just stopping it. It's changing your mind toward it. If you don't teach yourself that it's wrong, even if you stop it, what's going to happen? You're going to go back to it. All right, all right, I'm, I'm out of time. He, he says, I'm, I'm not worthy, and then he asks for a job. Let me give you the last thing. The last thing, the definition I want to show you, and we're going to be looking at this uh, in the life of David with Bathsheba out of 2 Samuel 11 to 12 and Psalm 51. But I want to show you the, the third definition in the New Testament for repentance means to turn around. It's not so much feeling sorry. It's not so much, you know, coming to the realization. It's, it's not even so much uh, uh, of you feeling the remorse. It's not so much uh, that, that, that you call uh, the sin uh, what it is and, 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 that, and that you change your mind. It, it has to do with you turning back to God. See, sin is opposite of God. And you can recognize that you messed up. You also can recognize that you're wrong. You can recognize that you need to change. But recognizing those things and turning back to God is two different things. It's two different things. And so what he does is, he says, I got to go back home. And I got to get right with my father. The Apostle Paul in Acts 26, when he stood before King Agrippa to defend his case, in Acts 26 and verse number 19, the Bible says Paul stood up and said these words, I was not obedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works befitting of repentance. For Paul, repentance was three parts. One, the notion of realizing that you're wrong. But two, you got to turn. And not just turn around, but turn to the Lord. And then you got to live in such a way that shows that you did it. So watch this. If you're doing something and you're not convicted, you know, you're getting away with it and you're good because you're getting away with it, and then somebody sheds lights on it. And now you realize you got to stop. But you're not stopping because you want to. You're stopping because everybody looking at you like, stop it. But that really don't fuel you to stop. You just now know everybody looking at you. Repentance is a process. And if we're going to get right, we got to learn to turn to God. Now, the sermon is yours. I'm going to stop right here. The first quarter of 2014, I want us all to consider what it means to turn around. As a matter of fact, that's what, that's what we're going to call the first quarter, the great turnaround. we got to get to a place where we say, Lord, I'm not going this way any longer. And I am now ready to turn around. That I've wandered far away from home. But like the song says, but now I'm coming home. Church, we got to get ready for an entire generation of people to come back home. 
And when they come, we ought to just be excited that they have come. Brother Moore, they ain't going to do nothing but go out there and do it again. That's between them and God. You don't know what they're going to do. If you are here, the invitation is going to be extended in such a way for you to make a choice. And I'm asking you, I'm begging you, choose Jesus. Choose Jesus. He hung, bled, and died so that you don't have to be judged by that sin. He hung, bled, and died so you don't have to continue in that sin. He hung, bled, and died so that you don't have to be controlled by that sin. And all I'm asking you to do this morning is to come to him. If you were here this morning and you don't know Christ and the pardon of your sin, he loved you enough to give his life on the cross. You come to him by faith hearing and believing that he's the Christ, the son of the living God. And you are at the moment now where you have come into yourself. You realize that changes need to be made. You are convicted. Maybe you are here and you say, you know something, I need to change how I think about a certain thing. I've been thinking about this thing the wrong way and that's the reason why I'm still getting the same result. Or maybe your repentance now is, I need to stand up and come to God. We beg you to come. Confess that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. We bury you in water. You come up a new creature, changed in the sight of God. He adds you to his body, which is the church. Remain faithful unto death and heaven to be your home. If you're here and you're already a member of the Lord's church, this sermon might not have been for you. But we're going to spend a whole lot of time talking about changing our minds and it might not be this week it may not be next week it might not be the two or three weeks after that but keep on coming because one of these sermons God has in store for you if you're here and you need prayer we beg you to come right now as together we stand away from God bless you, Sister Glaze. Please. Now Amen. I'm coming home. The paths of sin too long I've tried. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming.
da. <laughs>